Carrie here from Homestead How. This is our Homestead snowplow. It's our third plow we've had. And did you know right now in the United States, you can make over $300 per hour plowing snow for people. Absolutely amazing. I've learned a lot of stuff about snow plows over the last couple of years. And in today's video, I'm gonna share some fascinating facts about snow plows, some things to think about if you wanna get a snow plow on your homestead, some things I wish I would've done differently, and some really interesting facts like, what do the Amish do to plow snow? What were some of the first snow plows out there, and what are some things you should think about if you're gonna get a snow plow on your homestead? This is our boss plow the third plow we've had on our homestead. We paid $3,400 to have this plow installed and this is our second season using it. This is one of the largest homestead purchases we've made, but they have excellent resale value and we can use it as a plowing business. The very first thing we purchased on our homestead was an old tractor. The tractor was great for moving dirt around and for plowing the driveway, but it was just too cold and after a couple seasons it was time to move on. If we had more farmland, the tractor would have made more sense, but we rarely used it to move dirt. Later we paid $700 and found this plow truck on the side of the road with just a basic plow, no brakes, and it wouldn't go into second gear, and we used this bad boy for two or maybe even three years. Before purchasing our plow, of course I've seen them on the side of the road, but I never knew how they worked. I didn't know about float mode. I didn't know how you quickly connect them and disconnect them from your truck. So I figured I'd share a few of those things quickly because they're kind of interesting. So here's all of the controls for the plow. You can make it go to the right. You can make it go left. You can make it go up. You can make it go down. And then one of the important ones is double click down. You hold down, it turns red, and that means it's in float mode. Red means it's in float mode and it'll float along the ground and it'll kind of stay with the contour of the ground. So float mode is something I foolishly didn't consider when I had this tractor. The tractor just has a flat bucket on it, doesn't follow the contour of the road. Of course the road will level off to one side or the other. And then this other cheap uh, plow I had also did not have a float mode. Float mode makes a huge difference because of course you're not just scraping a flat surface, there's contours to the road, it goes up and down, side to side, and the float mode really helps with that. Snowplow can be a great investment because it holds a lot of its value, you can resell it later, and you can use it for a business. I'm not ready to offer mine up as a business yet because I'm still a rookie and I'm learning what I'm doing, but doing some research, I was amazed at how much money you can make as a snowplow operator. As I said in the beginning of the video, there's some towns right now at the end of 2021 paying $300 plus per hour for snowplow operators. And I just had a Google and did some research and even in my area, there's a huge demand right now for snowplow operators. I think the issue is a lot of guys have their own rig like I do and then they just go off on their own. So when it comes time for the city needing people, there's really a big shortage of them. And therefore the wages for those folks are going up significantly. The other great thing with a modern plow is that we can easily connect and disconnect it from our truck so we're not always lugging the big thing around with us. So a couple things I learned after getting this plow that I didn't know about before is how this actually attaches to the truck and how it comes off. So it's really simple, there's a mount on the bottom of the truck. And if you watch our channel you'll remember I completely destroyed this mount the first year we had the plow and I had to fix it in another video. I majorly messed up our new plow. Get the fire extinguisher! The quick replay, it's pretty cool. You can see this thing bend right into place perfectly from the tension from the jack. But there's a mount and there's two hooks that go under and those hooks go under this part right here. Can you get that Alyssa? Right here's the hook and then you have a hole. So what happens is you drive forward raised up so this kind of pushes this pin up and then the pin seats right here. So this part right here ends up on that hook and this part right here ends up on that hook and these come off right here 
and they got a little weatherproof cover, and they only go one way. The interesting thing with how hydraulics work is, I never understood this before, but on old plow trucks, they'd have a hydraulic pump, and the hydraulic pump pumps fluid that you can use in the cylinders. Well, on old trucks, that pump used to be mounted under the engine, and when you turn the engine on, it would turn that pump. Um, I don't know how long this has been, but on my plow and most plows, they have an electric motor which turns a hydraulic pump. So you only need to provide electricity to this. And then what happens is you turn the plow on, you hook the hydraulics up, and you raise it up. No more! No more! Stop! interesting with this is this blocks the light you're not supposed to drive a plow out on the freeway or out on the highway at high speeds because the plow will block the radiator and you won't get good airflow it also blocks these lights so you have an extra set of lights here and there's a switch in there that you turn on to use the plow lights so those are really some of the basics of owning a snow plow it is pretty straightforward but kind of interesting how the technology has evolved over time and that got me thinking what did people do in the olden days and what do the Amish do we have a huge Amish community near us what do they do when they get stuck in the snow so I did a little research turns out the Amish don't have as many problems as snow as we English do because they of course have horses and a carriage or a buggy and they're much higher up and the horse can tread through the snow much better than a vehicle can, even a four-wheel drive one. The other thing is they do have some plows in the Amish communities. In fact, I found this video of one here. Looking at what the Amish do nowadays is kind of like looking back into time. And that got me thinking, what were some of the first plows like? I did some research and found the first plows were basically triangle shapes made out of wood, kind of a wedge shape pulled behind the horse to wedge the snow out of the way. But even more interesting was before that they had snow rollers. That's right, back in the day they used to just roll on top of the snow to pack it down and then they put skis on their buggies and they would horse around and they'd walk on top of the snow instead of plowing it out of the way. Plowing really came prominent when we had four wheels and a vehicle that could get more easily stuck. So in conclusion, that's a little bit more about plow trucks and how they work. I hope you guys learned something new. Thanks a lot for watching. And here's some of our favorite photographs we took this week on our homestead.